so I'm, I've got this strategy that I've been doing for over 20 years. I finally just kind of put a name to it so that I can say, hey, there's a third way to invest. It's not active trading. It's not passive investing with the buy and hold strategy. It's asset revesting. We're right in the middle, reinvesting our capital uh, on these beautiful kind of clean sets of opportunities that roll through the markets year after year. And um, it's a it's a, a really great way to um, generate returns. Like we generate roughly two to three times the returns of like the buy and hold portfolio. Welcome back to the Money Seat Podcast. My guest today is Chris Remulin from the technicaltraders.com. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Gabe. Pleasure to be here. Chris, as I understand it, you specialize in revesting. I've never heard that phrase before. What is revesting? Sure. So it's, um, you know, you look at investing, typical investing, as you take your investments, you plop it in, for example, into the stock market and the bond market, and you leave it there. You just kind of let it do its thing. Well, revesting is taking control of your capital and and reinvesting it into different assets that are performing better. So for example, the buy and hold investor suffers from massive bear markets, multiple years of no returns and, and pretty big losses. Uh, and I don't believe in holding things that are going down and we can identify trends. And so asset revesting is simply saying, hey, if the stock market is going down and our technical analysis that we use tells us, hey, it's clearly going down, we move our money away from stocks and we'll go put it in a different asset that's going up. It could be bonds. It could be a currency. And uh, the nice thing about the way asset revesting works is as the markets get crazier and there's less and less kind of opportunity in the regular investments like stocks and bonds, as we move to different assets, we're always moving to slower moving assets, which we might be covering a little bit, but we want to step away from volatility, away from risk when things are starting to get crazy. And it's all about preserving capital. If you don't ride bear markets down, if you don't hold through big corrections, uh, the profits naturally take care of themselves because you're only going to be holding assets that are going up in value, uh, or you'll be sitting in cash kind of collecting interest or dividend payments while you're waiting for the markets to stabilize to get back in. One of the things that I always struggle with is I keep hearing the terms bull market, bear market. How do we know if we are in a bull market or a bear market? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people, there's many different ways that people will define a bear market. The most general way people say is if the stock market has has come down in value 20% or more, they'll say, hey, we're in a bear market. Other people will say there's the golden cross, which is um, they use the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. If the 50-day moving average crossed down below the 200-day, they'll say we're in a bear market. When the 50-day crosses up above it, we're in a bull market. Other people will say we'll base it off of the economy, really. They'll be like, oh, we're in a recession. We're in a bear market. So everybody's got their own ways that they kind of identify or, or call things. But uh, the general rule to me is if the majority of the assets are going down, like the stock market, like the SP 500, the NASDAQ, if those indexes are going down and they're trending lower and money is flowing out of them, then more or less we're in a bear market. And I do like to usually you know, see the markets down 20 plus percent to really kind of call it that kind of bear market phase. Uh, but really, um, you know, depending on how you look at it, if the longer term trend is going down, it's been going down for several months, you know, that's more or less kind of a bear market phase. And right now, if people are worried, right, saying, you know, they just they read the news and the news is always trying to freak people out. But one of the ones I heard recently, one of the headlines was that Michael Burry, right? The guy was famous from the big short. He recently mm -hmm. placed a big short on the SPY and the QQQ. If someone thinks that the markets are headed for a rough patch, what should they do? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of ways to, to do that in the financial markets, but um, it, it depends on what type of individual you are, right? So you've got two, two extremes of the spectrum. You've got active traders who are people who are kind of constantly doing trades or trading stocks or ETFs or futures, and they're in and out all the time throughout the week or every month. And then you've got the passive investor who's just with an advisor. They literally park their funds and they just keep adding to it. And they have to ride that kind of roller coaster. Um, to take advantage of a falling market, you need to have a strategy system in place that can identify the overall market trends. And once you've identified that the trend is going down, then you need to decide how you want to attack that market. I, I always go for the most conservative approach, uh, the most straightforward one. I, I believe in keeping thing, things as simple as possible. And that's really 
you step aside. So if the stock market starts to go down, we'll go and look at a different asset. We'll look at the, the long uh, treasury note bonds. Uh, if they're not favorable, then we'll go look at the U.S. dollar index uh, because there's an ETF that allows us to play that as well. And uh, so we'll try to move to a different asset that is actually going up while the stock market is having a big reset. But the, the thing is, we could be going into what, what I call a stage four decline, which maybe um, if I actually just ex describe it really quickly here, then people will kind of maybe get a better feel. So the stock market goes through four stages. A stage one is like a bottom basing a sideways market. A stage two is a bull market phase. Everybody loves those. They can last a decade or longer sometimes. Uh, stage three is a major topping phase. This is when commodities start to come to life a little bit, like uh, crude oil and precious metals, which is what we've seen with gold and oil over the past couple of years. Uh, this is when sectors one month are one group of sectors in stocks are doing really well. And then the next month, they're completely falling out of bed and, and crashing. And, and that's what we've seen for the past year and a half is a major stage three topping phase is what uh, you know it looks like we're in. And then we go into a stage four, which is a financial reset, a decline. And it's more than just like a bear market. 2022 was a bear market. Stock market corrected about 24%. Well, stage four is like a 2008 financial crisis. It's like a 2000 tech bubble burst. It's usually like a 50 plus percent type of correction. It's a financial reset among almost all assets. And there is no safe haven play, meaning you can't really just jump into gold. You can't uh, buy bonds. You can't go do all these things. Almost everything goes down. And which loops back to your original question is, how do you go about playing this? Where's the big bet to profit from falling prices? And the way to do that is when we get into a stage four, then we look to trade inverse ETFs. So if the stock market like the SP 500 falls 5%, we can play an inverse ETF that will go up 5%. It does the exact opposite. And it, it, it keeps Sorry, it Sorry, I was going to say, that's, it sounds like it's a fancy way to say you're, you're, you go short. Right. So the, the, the problem with going short is it requires um, you know, a certain type of trading account. There's unlimited risk with a short position because uh, you, you're selling something. It could keep going up in value. There's infinity risk. Uh, and people just aren't comfortable with it. It bends their mind backwards to sell something they don't have. Uh, the inverse ETF is simple. You just buy it like a stock. It goes up as the market falls and you sell it. It's very, very straightforward. And uh, and you can also buy leverage on these. So if the SP 500 falls 5%, you could buy a three times leveraged inverse SP 500 fund. And you know, in two or three days, you could rally 15% on that inverse ETF and, and really benefit from falling prices. So ETFs is where I focus all my money. I have I started with small cap stocks, you know, 20 plus years ago, was into fundamental analysis, and I slowly evolved realizing fundamentals don't work. If you, the only way as investors, doesn't matter if you're in real estate or whatever it is you, you invest in, we need price to move in our favor. And uh, I learned that you, when it comes to the stock market, we have to follow price. If price is trending up and we, we're comfortable with that asset, we want to own it. If it starts to go sideways or show signs of weakness, we want to step away and go look for another one. And uh, technical analysis is following the chart patterns. It's reading the trends. Uh, I use a lot of intermarket analysis, cycle analysis. Um, you know, everything in the financial world is kind of linked in some way. So if the dollar falls, gold could go up. Um, you know, there's all these different relationships, right? There's safe haven sectors like utilities. Um, and so uh, the key is just understanding how these markets move and, uh, finding a, a, an instrument that allows you to take advantage of the current market direction and wherever that money is flowing. So you mentioned that you used to be into fundamental analysis with stocks, but but you're basically, you graduated now, you were primarily a technical trader and you, you trade indices, correct? Yeah, yeah. So so for example, so back in the tech bubble, I was buying tech, tech stocks. I was doing exceptionally well. And this was back, I was in college. <laughs> I was like killing it in college. It was absolutely a dream. And then the tech bubble hit and um, I'd be owning stocks that uh, were growing by leaps and bounds quarter after quarter, yet their share price would get cut in half and then fall like, you know, some of them were falling like 70, 80, 90%, even though they were actually good companies. And now I was buying them because they had good fundamentals. But the problem is when the tide is going down, when people are selling, we're in a bear market, there's just a, a mass liquidation of people panicking and selling their positions, margin calls. 
and everything goes down. And that's when I realized, okay, well, the fundamentals don't really work that well when it comes to investing in the stock market because you can have the strongest company and it still loses 30, 40, 50%. And um, if you look at the, you know, for an investor who's, who doesn't know much about the stock market, I always think of it because I'm a surfer, I'm a kiteboarder, uh, I'm kind of a big water baby. I love everything around the water. But uh, think of the stock market like the ocean. You've got a rising tide and you've got a falling tide. A rising tide is a bull market. We want to naturally be long stocks. We never really want to bet against the market. We'll step aside when it, there was a pause or pullback, but we're not going to short or buy an inverse ETF. Uh, when the tide is going down, when we're in a bear market, we don't want to buy stocks or hold stocks at all. We want to buy inverse ETFs because on, naturally the tide is going down. And as long as it's going down, we want something that's going up in value in the opposite direction uh, with an inverse ETF. So once you identify if the tide's going up or down, then you can kind of deploy your strategy of what you're going to be trading. And then think of it like you're walking down the beach and all the surfers are just sitting out there waiting for a set of waves. Those are the waves that we look to trade. So we can, we wait and we'll, a lot of times we'll be waiting in cash or it's some type of ETF that just pays a cash interest payment every month. So we collect a little interest. We're safe, just floating and waiting for a new opportunity. And then we see a beautiful set of waves come and we can hop on that. It could be the stock market index. It could be bonds. It could be the US dollar, you know, rallying or selling off. Uh, but they're very clear, very nice signals. And we can get on them and catch these beautiful trades. And the nice thing about doing this is we can catch multiple um, uh, gains from the market, even when the stock market's going down. For example, 2022, the markets fell like 20 plus percent. Well, the US dollar, which moves very slow, actually rallied 17%. It was like our number one uh, trade uh, throughout the year. You just get back into the US dollar ETF and you catch a beautiful rally. And so when other people aren't making money and they're losing money, our account just keeps growing because we're always either in cash earning interest or in something going up. And that's what asset revesting is all about. It's all about just hold things going up. And if you don't like anything, you wait on the sidelines, just like a surfer for that next set of waves. It's not about being active. It's not about always being in trades. Uh, sometimes no trade is the best trade. And that happens quite often in these volatile markets. It's sometimes best to sit aside and just look at the markets, just shake the crap out of everybody. And we're just like, oh, it feels so good to be here waiting for like a new set of waves that's crystal clear. <laughs> yeah, very cool. How, how long do you stay in a trade typically? It really varies. Um, we're kind of in this kind of potential stage three topping phase. So it's been pretty volatile over the past year and a half. Uh, so our trades might last anywhere from two or three weeks. Uh, they can last up to about eight months. So this strategy, it's, um, it's kind of stuck right in the middle. You know, an active trader will look at it and be like, it is way too slow for me. I don't want to do that. It's not enough trades because this strategy only trades about five to 12 times a year. Uh, so depending on the market, it's not much, um, but it's just enough to catch these big sets of waves that roll through the market and we just, you know, can benefit from it. And on the other side, we've got the really passive investors with like an advisor who are all like, I don't know much about the markets. I'll let somebody else do it. They'll look at my strategy, be, strategy and be like, well, that's pretty, pretty active because they're used to doing nothing. Uh, so I'm, I've got this strategy that I've been doing for over 20 years. I finally just kind of put a name to it so that I can say, hey, there's a third way to invest. It's not active trading. It's not passive investing with the buy and hold strategy. It's asset revesting. We're right in the middle, reinvesting our capital uh, on these beautiful kind of clean sets of opportunities that roll through the markets year after year. And um, it's a it's a, a really great way to um generate returns. Like we generate roughly two to three times the returns of like the buy and hold portfolio. And the buy and hold portfolio has a 30 to 50% drawdown. So investors could be suffering that much during bear markets. This strategy has less than a 6% drawdown. So we are, you know, really able to crank out consistent big returns uh, each year with almost no downside. And that's why, you know, investors love this strategy because it just runs like a machine. It's very simple, straightforward. You don't need charting platform. All of our trades are done like at the end of the day. So um, if we have a signal, I'll send out an alert to say people who follow my signals, 
like tomorrow at the open, we buy, we're buying 100% of our portfolio into the SP500 and the NASDAQ. And they put the order in and it executes. And then we might not have a, hit a target for a few weeks. So it's a very straightforward strategy that, you know, they can trade on their own. Uh, they can be auto traded for them. Uh, it really, I've, I've designed it so that it runs like a machine. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm from an entrepreneur family. I've built my own health business from scratch. I flew overseas, created the products, built up a brand, a dealer network. I sold the business. I'm a pilot. I know all about checklists. You have to have systems in place. So, you know, I've created my trading strategy, asset revesting, to be as, it's just like a business that runs on its own. And that's why I offer like auto trading so that literally you can park money and just have it run for you. And it's just like having your own like rental property, just pounding out kind of returns year after year. And it's a totally different way to invest without all the crazy downside risk that comes with the stock market of active trading and, and doing nothing and, you know, through a bear market. So your returns are two to three times what the typical portfolio. So I'm, let me put some numbers to it. If the typical portfolio gets 7% or 8% a year, you're looking at something like 15 to 20, maybe 25% returns. Yeah. So we're, we're averaging about 15 and a half percent. If you look at the SP 500, like the 60, 40 portfolio after the, over the last 10 years, it's only been, it's actually been less than 6% return. We're oh, wow. doing about six, 15 and a half, uh, almost 16%. Uh, without the, without the the crazy risk, which is the really exciting part, because it just it takes away the whole edge. Because a lot of people are nervous about the stock market, and I think there's a big correction coming, and uh, big corrections are unbelievable opportunities. As you know, it's not just in the stock market. If you if you make money during a falling market, then you have even more to invest later when things are like ready for a new major bull market. But when it comes to real estate, I love real estate. I own a lot of real estate. I built self storage facility. I have my own. Um, it's going to be an amazing opportunity to reinvest. I can't wait to go buy more multifamily, potentially buy more self-storage facilities. When everything's at a, I, w I would like to say a discount, but at least more of a fair market value. Because right now, real estate is like, it's just nosebleed pricing, right? Amazing. So you mentioned something about a bot. Are you saying that there is a way to set up a bot that will trade your strategies automatically? I wouldn't say a bot. So. Um, the way the way it works is I have done auto trading. I have had a bot. I've traded with my own bot before, uh, but I'm not a fan of robots and you know fully automated trading. So the way it works is we run the trading strategy on our server. When there's a signal, we send the signal to the broker, and the broker then executes it for the client. So we we always verify everything. It's too easy for robots uh, to do their own thing or for a glitch or something, right? It, you know, you can always get an odd piece of data. So. Uh, we still, uh, I believe, in the hands-on approach. Let the let the computer generate the signals, but we need to verify, confirm, send it over, and then the broker just executes it for uh, whoever wants it done in there. That's accounts. perfect. Yeah. So it sounds like the computer is generating the ideas and crunching the data, but you still have the human oversight before yeah. the signal gets transmitted downstream. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, you're like you're like living proof that some people can beat the market, which is amazing, right? So yeah. congratulations to you on that. I know that there's this <laughs> idea out there, right? Like the official market hypothesis or whatever, that basically nobody can beat the market. And then just earlier this year, I read this book from the 1980s called Market Wizards by Jack Schwager. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute classic. I strongly I've recommend read them, everyone yeah. read it. Yeah. And it was just like real life stories of like professional trader after trader of people who beat the market consistently. Yeah. And so here I am. I, I just met another one. His name is Christopher Mullen. And uh, <laughs> that's well done, man. That's super cool. So tell me, like how it. can people learn more about your your company? Your how can people get on your newsletter? Tell us more. Sure. Yeah. Well, they can they can always go to my website. Uh, I got a couple of different websites. One of them is just revesting dot com. Uh, they can get on a free newsletter there to 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 get a quarterly report on the asset revesting strategy. Um, if they really want to get into the nitty gritty, they can go to thetechnicaltraders dot com. And there I have a free blog and um, uh, I've got a free newsletter there that I offer my trading signals there for individuals to follow. And so that's what I, I'm more or less a financial newsletter subscription where you copy the trades I do. So these are strategies I all trade. I trade the strategy with my own money. I built it for myself, but I share it with everybody else. And so I put on all these trades and I share it with uh, subscribers and we trade them there. And of course, they could always go to Amazon and go and purchase my book, Asset Revesting, if they want to kind of get a, a good understanding of how it works and um, 
how, how, how they can benefit from it. And there's, there's just so many benefits to it versus traditional trading and investment styles. It's really mind blowing how the financial industry has really kind of um, given everybody like Stockholm syndrome. The average investor thinks the buy and hold is kind of the only best way to do it. And, you know, investors hurt themselves even more by telling their broker, oh, I like this stock, go buy this stock and let's buy some of this stock. And all they're actually doing is diversifying more, but they're adding more volatile assets. And so when a bear market eventually hits, they get hit way harder than they ever really thought was possible. And um, it, it, I, I'm just trying to help as many people as possible right now because the majority of investors are 50 plus. They hold most of the stocks uh, in the stock market and they're close to retirement or retired. They have the most money they've ever had. And if we go through another financial reset, people are going to be losing 30 to 50 plus percent of their investment accounts in very short periods of time. And it's going to just destroy retirements. And it's a, it's a scary time. So that's what I'm just trying to protect now is because we're getting close to something that could be pretty ugly. And um, it's better to be prepared and know about the potential and it not happen than it is to be caught, you know, not knowing and being like, how did I just lose 40 years of working my butt off in a year? <laughs> and it's gone, right? So uh, that's I'm trying to just create that passive income through the markets uh, that can really generate consistent returns. It's all about being consistent. And um, yeah, that's how they can follow me there. Chris, absolutely fantastic. I'll put all those links into the show notes. Thanks again very much for joining us on this Friday afternoon. Um, yeah, have a good one, man. Thanks very much. Thanks, Gabe. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for joining us for another episode of the Money Seed Podcast. Please remember to click like and subscribe. It really helps spread the message to other investors and it helps attract new viewers to the show. We appreciate your support. Thanks very much.